Of course, there were plenty of uh, ghost stories on the lighter side from colonial South Carolina, and there were stories both light and dark from the Gullah culture, but it was the American Civil War that caused ghost stories to take a turn, a very dark and sober turn. Don't look. If you're laying in your bed at night and you hear the rumble of wagon wheels and the clatter of horses' hooves on the cobblestone streets, don't look. Don't get up to peek through a window or move the lace curtains. For heaven's sake, don't stand in the doorway gawking like you're looking at P.T. Barnum's traveling show. Don't look. You may hear a voice yell, step up there, get in line. You hear the heavy tramp, tramp, tramp of boots in the street. You hear the horses straining against leather harness as they pull the big heavy wagons and cannons up the streets. But don't look. Everybody knows what that sound is. That's the sound of the marching dead. Civil War soldiers who were buried in the fields, in the valleys, wherever they fell, the last thing they heard was that General Lee needed reinforcements in Virginia. And so on any given night, you never can tell when, sometimes at the dark of the moon, sometimes at the bright full moon, they muster a ghostly army and they rise up from their graves and they go marching northward. And you may hear them passing by your door, but if you do, don't look. And then there are the singing dead particularly in the fall of the year. Men go riding on horseback, uh, hunting deer and fox, and they go charging out across the old plantation properties. And sometimes their horse will step on the grave of a fallen soldier. He's buried beneath the moss and ferns. There's no stone marking his final resting place. And so he sings out from beneath the ground to let you know he is there. It's a very strange song. It's not in a major key, and it's much more macabre than minor. It's best if you not try to sing along. Just step aside and listen respectful like, don't sing. And then there are the thirsting dead. They reach out to touch you, so to speak. Some of those old plantation houses after the war were completely abandoned, and poor folks would move in, squatters, there was an old squatter woman living in one of those houses. She sent her daughter down to the well one evening just at the edge of dark to bring back a pitcher of water. Well, the girl took the jug and she walked the length of the yard and came to the well and she drew up the bucket from the rope, poured the water over into the pitcher, and she started back up to the house. And just as her slippered foot touched the front porch steps, that water jug was lifted out of her hands by some unseen force and it floated through the air all by itself. After just a moment, it tilted. And in the moonlight, the girl saw a silver stream of water trickle down from the lip of that jug toward the floor, and it just disappeared from sight. This action was followed by a long, satisfied sigh as if some poor thirsty man had been given a cool drink of water. And then the jug righted itself and it floated on through midair and it tilted again and another silver stream trickled down through the moonlight, disappeared from sight. This happened over and over again as the jug passed in a long circle the entire length of the piazza and it came back and rested in that girl's hands bone dry. She was so frightened, she dropped the jug. It shattered into a hundred pieces. She ran inside and told her mother what she had seen. And her mother said, oh, that's just the thirsty dead. This house was used as a field hospital during the war. You might have noticed the blood stains on the floor of the back room. That was where the surgeons did their work. Many men were laid out on that long piazza waiting to see the surgeon and lots of them died from exposure. They died from just the simple lack of something as simple as a cool drink of water. They take in death what they did not receive in life. You'll just have to go and fill the pitcher again. But the girl explained that she couldn't. She dropped it and it broke into a hundred pieces. But when her mother walked out onto the front porch with her, there was the pitcher sitting up on the steps, completely mended. You couldn't even see a crack where all the pieces had miraculously been put back together. 
and added to that plain pitcher was a beautiful silver rim. The thirsting dead. They had their own way of saying thank you for a cool drink of water. Now the thirsting dead and the singing dead and the marching dead, they won't hurt you. They don't mean you any harm. They don't mean to frighten you. They just want you to know they are there. So as long as you sing the old songs and tell the old tales, especially if you do that in their hearing, at the places where they lay in their graves, as long as they hear those old songs, hear those old stories, they know they are not forgotten. They can lay still and rest in peace. But should you ever stop telling the old tales, don't be the least bit surprised if they rise up from their graves and you hear them marching past your door. And should you hear the marching, don't look.